And so it is. Greetings, my beloved brothers and sisters, my beloved soul family, everyone connecting to this precious moment. I am Ikara, sovereign creator and ambassador of love, joy, freedom, truth, gratitude, grace, and well-being, and whatever else you're cooking up in there in that belly of yours. <laughs> it is so good, beloved Imzaya, to be back here today to join you in this wonderful moment, to see that cables are still a thing <laughs> when trying to record. And what a thing that we are recording here today. Maybe you haven't noticed, but you are sitting on November the 18th in your linear calendar. And usually the 18th comes before the 19th. And if you have been following your astrology reports and all of these things that we've said recently are absolutely meaningless now, <laughs> And of course, you have been continuing to do these things. Many of you, why would you not? It's fun. But if you have, you have seen that tomorrow, your beloved planet known as Pluto is changing signs. And it is moving for the first time in a long, long time into the sign of Aquarius. So you are literally beyond the sunrise of the new age and at the morning of that new age tomorrow technically already right now as we are recording this message you are arriving in the age of aquarius cue music <laughs> indeed and this is a big thing. And before any of you get confused and you say to yourselves, but what does this have to do with Pluto or with astrology? In fact, what does this have to do with the external reality whatsoever? Because is there even such a thing? And we say, well, it has everything to do with your external reality as it in Ba relates to your internal reality. Hmm? Because Pluto, as your astrologers will tell you, represents, amongst many other things, but mainly the deep human subconscious, the unconscious states of humanity. It is why people such as Carl Jung were so fascinated with the energies of Pluto and the subconscious of humanity. But, as you now observe this so-called Gregorian calendar, this so-called physical space and time movement of your planets clicking into Aquarius and into this new age, then all this really means is that your internal reality has expressed this. We have said to you many times that this entire holographic training ground called Nekariah is ultimately merely playing out in a moment that you, from the perspective of the Creator Self, would consider a moment into the past. Hmm? You've been told that as you raise your consciousness to the point of Lin, to the point of one creator consciousness that you are going to experience inside of this Ekuraya the type of deja vu that you would come across sometimes in your lives but now you're going to be experiencing it in a very constant manner we have told you this 
And the reason this is, is that you are more aware and are going to become more aware of the permutation of the permanent states as you generate reality than you will be of the outcome. You will also be aware of the outcome, of course, but much like an actor having been on a stage recording a movie and afterwards in the movie theater watching that movie premiere, if you will. You already know what has happened. You already know what lines you have said, how the movie goes, and maybe the only thing that's, that's a little bit of a surprise to you will be the editing, huh? <laughs> as you uh, intercreate with other creator perspectives. But we'll talk more about that another time. The point is, that I'm trying to make now, that this shift of Pluto into Aquarius happens now because of what has been accomplished recently. And as the permutations occurred that translated this shift into infinometry, into your Echoria, into your training ground, into your holographic situation here that you've got going on inside of this, as it had been explained, this field of Lavat, where geometry is the thing, huh? or used to be the thing. As this has occurred, your linear time and space experience has adapted for this. You have no idea, and we've said this to you many, many times over the years, but you have very little idea of how often editing and complete rewriting of your timeline actually occurs. Years ago, when you had Hanaloa, the energy of the planets, Venus and the Sun and those uh, entities speak to you, you were told a lot about this, how often this timeline gets changed, reset, evolves, if you will, based on choices that you made. And back then, it was attempted to explain to you that it, had, that it had something to do with your magnetic field and the magnetic field of the sun, if you remember that, interacting. Hmm? And that these small interactions caused changes. Now, of course, these interactions were not placed directly onto your solar sun, because it too is a reflection in an external reality of what is truly happening in the Lin point, which is ultimately within. Yes? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, in this case, the same thing. The arrival at the exact right time of Pluto into Aquarius to fit, in a way, the content that we have been speaking of recently isn't the result of time and space moving forward independently of you, but is the result of the changes in your consciousness that you have made. And of course, now your astrologers would say, but no, no, there is technically, you can go back, uh, you, can, you can look at the movement of the planets and the stars, and, and your astronomers too will say, you can calculate all of these things all the way back to the Big Bang. Yes, you can in this moment, but the mind, the ego, and the personality have no awareness of these resets, of these changes, of these upgrades, if you will, that occur all the time. You are not only aware of yourself here, remember, you're also aware, obviously, of yourself outside of this Echoraya, and there, corrections, permutations are sent into here all the time. The mind, as I said, has no way to process this change. The mind, right now, as we are speaking here, a change could be made that the island of Atlantis has always been around, even up to the modern time, and you would remember it always having been there as your mind adapts to the new input. Of course, that is Savok, that is the ego mind personality construct. What does remain aware of these changes is the Sankara level of your consciousness, as has been explained recently. And that is where you are going to be able to catalog the effects of your permutations upon this reality. As I said, the mind 
is a fascinating thing. I've said this many times over the years. And so is the ego. And so is the personality. In fact, it is one of the projects that we come in here, yes, to study and to explore. But one thing about it that is the most fascinating is that the mind, the ego and the personality cannot process these changes that I just talked about, nor can they truly ever be comfortable with the idea of the creative language known as Dalin, nor can it ever be comfortable with the fact that technically speaking, whenever the Pak Kwan Yin Son or somebody else says to you, uh, this word Sanake means this. Well, yes, it does. But it is not the only way in Dalin to express the English equivalent. Hmm? There are infinite ways of doing so, dependent on the moment, dependent on the interaction, dependent on the creator. So yes, while you are currently receiving a type of standard Dalin, if you will, of course, once you are actually out there exploring, once you are actually interacting, it's not like you're going to be looking for the word for hello. What was it again? Sanaka, sanake, dakasan. No, it's going to come natural. It's not even going to be a word. We have tried to say this to you as well. These sounds are not exactly the sounds that you are generating within, but it is the closest that can be approximated in descriptive language, such as your English or your other current languages on earth are. They are expressive. They are not creative. They are from within space and time, while this creative Dalin is from beyond space and time. Hmm? So the mind, as I was saying, can't ever truly be creative. It cannot understand the creative language. Now this is funny, of course, because everyone deep down when it comes down to it, even the Pope, even the most humble of people on this earth, if you really drill down into that personality, into that ego, into that mind, it's going to think it's the king of the world or the queen of the world. It is programmed to think so. It is also programmed to think that it has any type of control over this reality. And that is why it believes itself to be creative. It believes that it can have an impact on reality if it only pushes hard enough, if it only tries, if it only controls enough. You know, the service to self path is a response to that for those that used to want to explore that at the time, at the world of geometry as it once stood. Now, of course, this is impossible. But the mind, therefore, it cannot create. What can it do? It can imagine. It has imagination. You know all of that. It can imagine the worst case scenarios. It has a bit of a harder time imagining the best case scenarios. But, you know, if you push it hard enough, you'll get something out there. Yeah, maybe I can be a little happy. <laughs> that sort of thing. But boy. Let it imagine the worst case scenarios, the, the terrible things that could happen to you, the terrible things that could be outcomes on earth, and look around. <laughs> look at your wars. Hmm? Look at the standing of, of your grand illusions, the belief in, in death, the belief in form, and how deep that truly goes. So deep that you have based entire religions on this idea of death. And yes, of course it is true that you could also argue to some extent that the idea of religion is somehow a bad Xerox copy of the idea of Honomea, of the home base reality which you could then refer to as heaven from the perspective of religion. What is interesting <laughs> is that they then make up a hell that's even worse than this place that you're in right now. And I say, 
Well, maybe you can imagine it, but the sad state of it is that anything that you can imagine in hell exists somewhere here on earth. It does. I mean, I don't have to remind you in ancient times how bad it went, how horrible people treated each other, entire countries fought and killed each other, entire belief systems destroyed each other. Huh? I don't have to remind you of, of the modern day. Look at what's happening in Gaza. Murder, terrible genocide, destruction of life. Look at what's happening in Israel. The same goddamn thing. Look at what's happening in Ukraine. Huh? And look at what's beginning to happen in Russia. The same goddamn thing. Do you think that you can imagine something worse than what these people in the fields of Ukraine are going through? I don't think so. Maybe you can create monsters that physically look worse. But I believe that those shapes that those men and in some cases also women are feeling in places like that is pretty much the worst that you can possibly imagine. So yeah, the world as it has been, the sphere that you call Earth and, and what has been going on here certainly has the ability to represent those vibrational states that you could consider hellish that you could consider demonic. I'm definitely not going to be the last person to tell you <laughs> that the things that are in the minds of some of your leaders and the things that are in the minds of some of your business tycoons or typhoons or whatever you want to call them are rather demonic, are rather horrific, the way they value life. But again, this is normal. <clears throat> it is normal for Echorias such as this one to go this deep. Recently, the Pleiades, the Seven Sisters, or the Seventy Sister, or the Seven Billion Sisters, uh, the Seven Infinities, I should call them, they told you how deep it went in their cultures and they didn't even touch the scratch the surface really I mean they spoke about horrible things but imagine one civilization overnight in one second erasing the language culture and memory of an entire world that is a few light years away from theirs if you will Imagine that. Imagine hacking the history of entire civilizations, entire societies, and erasing, if you will, everything that makes those societies themselves. It's easy to arrive on a planet like that and to take over. You end up with some zombies walking around that you reprogram. And that is the sort of thing that was going on at the Pleiades, as they sank deeper and deeper into Savok. So as I say, the mind and its domain here can imagine enormously hellish and dualistic things. But <clears throat> we cannot judge this. We cannot push this away. We, again, are here to explore these things. There's never a need to go at a certain level, at a certain depth, never. It's also been shared recently that you can finish these Echorias within seconds by simply remembering who you are and only accepting that about yourself. We have said this many times. but as many probably also have experienced in the, le in the last week or so, uh, leading up to the 11th and then also going beyond that, we're pretty sure that you have seen that you're not only holding on to the good stuff, you're also holding on to all the so-called bad stuff 
that you once imagined into being, such as the concept of pain, such as the concept of disease, such as the concept of grief and guilt, such as the concept of lack, finality, all of those sorts of things. It's hard to let go of mainly those things because it is exactly there that it is hardest to take responsibility and to have acceptance for all of these states, for all of those things. It is easier to think that somehow you can leave all of that here and move beyond it. Of course you can, but you're just going to come and pick it back up again. We have said this to you as well. But anyway, as this mind has imagined all sorts of things, from wars to religion, there's one that I want to focus on before we continue with the rest of this presentation, and that is religion. For those of you that are linguistically oriented, let's say, you know that religion originates out of the Latin word religare, which means, in one of its most fun translations, to bind. Hmm? And later on, it came out of Latin into ancient French, and there the word became known as religio, religio. And religio, even worse, is bounded, bonded. Now, what binds a person? What do you use to, to bind a person? You cast a spell. And we have talked about spells last year when I was here in October of 2023 opening this Ascended Master School with my usual flair, people f running out of the room dressed in white, thinking that an Ascended being cannot say fuck you and those sorts of things. We keep saying, if you can, and so can we. <laughs> but last year, I told you about the cycles of the spell that had been cast over humanity. I told you about the bidecennial cycles, on or give or take, if you will, in which these spells need to be reinforced and why you therefore have lived in a, in a time where there is intensity such as Corona hmm, or 9-11 and then there seems to be pockets, zones in between that are more of a lull hmm, where you just allow to be miserable all by yourself without anything massive going on, as you, as you sort of catch your breath with, of, because of the intensity of the wool, of the illusion that once again has been reinforced like a booster vaccine, if you will, in your mind. I've told you about those phases. I've also told you that when the war in Israel started the war between Israel and Gaza and Hezbollah and Syria and Iran and all of that shit. When that kicked off, I told you it was an act of desperation. I said that you were about to burst through and break that bubble and that therefore for the first time in the casting of this spell to keep humanity dormant, disconnected from itself, if you will. We're going to get deeper into that in a second. I told you that that 
was an act of desperation and that it wouldn't go well. And look at it. The world has gone even more insane than it was. Everyone is screaming at each other about who's right and who's wrong. Even the fact that I earlier here said the word genocide when it comes to Gaza is already going to split half of the people watching this video because some are going to say you cannot speak of a genocide if it's only 40 odd thousand people <laughs> that have been murdered. Hmm? And there's going to be others that say, well, yes, that is the right word to say because you're trying to murder a population. But the truth of it is that as this giant magical fuck-up <laughs> occurred, which any magician, any magician worth their salt could see coming from a mile away, that it wouldn't hold, that the tension would be too thick, that the illusion would be too grand and too mesmerizing and impossible for the soul to continue to believe, I told you that it would snap. And it did. It snapped all the way up to the Lin point, in fact. And for the first time in a very, very long time, humanity is awakened. You generated through that awakening the arrival of the age of Aquarius that you are now sitting in. And the religio, the bondedness, the relegare, the binding spell that made you believe over the generations that you needed leaders on a governmental level, on a country level, on a global level, if they could have continued with their spiel, and that you needed leaders, religious leaders, to help you speak to God and to help you translate the language of the Lord <laughs> towards you, pathetic little people who obviously have nothing in the way of a heart, <laughs> nothing in the way of a connection. No, that we need to leave up to the old men, don't we? <laughs> Shuffling around their little palaces made by slaves, by destroying entire people, stealing. Yeah, fuckers. <laughs> their time has come. Their time has come. Because you know what? All of these wars, even the one in Ukraine, even that one, is ultimately a religious war. It is a war about who is wrong and who is right. It is a war between a type of Protestantism and a type of Christianity. Ultimately, I mean, look at Russia. You have the world leader of Russia called Putin huh? <laughs> standing there on his stage. And who is telling the people that his war is righteous? The fucking Protestant Pope. <laughs> yeah. That guy with the beard, you know, because <laughs> they always, always have beards, don't they? Except for the Christian ones, their beard goes up. <laughs> They have it up on top of their head, their beard. <laughs> the fish people. Yep. Also a religious war. Just as much. Because why, what is the desire to dominate land all about? Why is there a desire to dominate Jerusalem? For the resources? No. For the religion. And they try to make you believe that in Ukraine... It's all about the resources and about defending the free world. Yeah, right. I think that is going to be taken care of 
because of this awakening that's occurring and that's not going to be taken care of by the military. That's not going to be taken care of by the government. That's going to be fucking taken care of by each and every one of you. Because that is what this arrival in the age of Aquarius, this return to infonometry, this reaching up to the Lin point, and all of these things that have been discussed recently is all about at the end of the day, isn't it? Your direct connection to God. Your direct connection to the Creator, to the Creator Self, to the Creator Whole. When that gets reestablished, I'd like to see how people are going to feel about attacking one another and killing one another. Because they'll be attacking themselves. They'll be killing themselves. They'll be killing every single being they recognize as their brother, their sister, and their self. That is what is coming. I don't want to sound like a Michael Jackson song, but ultimately, you are going to all be laying down your weapons. Individually. On the battlefield called life. <laughs> And not only on the, in the war zones of politics and governments, but also in the war zones of your minds. The war zones that are your personal lives, that are your emotional states. All these old men, popes, priests, imams, Druids, I don't care, all of them that have been telling you what's what, what's godly and what isn't, what's right and what is wrong. Please leave the stage. Your time is over. It is. And it is over today. The age of humanity is here. The age of truth and the age of life and the age of well-being is here. People telling you what God is saying or isn't saying for fuck's sakes. The weirdest thing about it all is how you could ever believe it. How you could ever believe your religious leaders, your teachers that told you that two and two is four. And that told you what word comes before the other one. And what is true in history and what isn't. How could you believe them? That is the biggest question I have, especially once you get a little older and you actually see what it means to be an adult. <laughs> if at that point you don't begin to question everything, <laughs> I don't know, but at some point you must think, well, I'm 40 now, I'm 70 now. What are these people, this person that has been this Pope all along, what does he actually know? Huh? What does he actually know? When does he actually fucking talk to God then? And if he did, then why isn't this recorded and broadcast worldwide? That would be some fucking proof. Because it can't be. Because where does that happen, that conversation? It happens in here. It happens in me. It happens in you. It happens in everyone. That is what we are returning to. You know, funny thing, anyone over the generations that would wake up to these truths would often be joked towards and, and people would say, oh, this person has a messiah complex. You know, they think they're Jesus or something. Well, <laughs> it's going to be a fun time because you're all going to think that. Not exactly with that name, but you're going to feel those energies, the Buddha, the Jesus, the Mohammed, all of them, 
inside of you. And then you're going to see that nothing, nothing that these men has ever told you about these beings is true. Not one fucking word. None of their history. Do you really think, in the case of the Muslim family, that, that Muhammad married and sexually entertained girls at nine years old? No. Who would know? Anyone alive from back then? No. And even your books that remained to tell you these stories were in many cases written hundreds, if not a thousand years later, and were translated dozens, if not hundreds of times. And not always by brilliant linguists. You know, one fuck up, and there you are, you're at war with each other. <laughs> you know, you have one pope saying, kill that, love that, do this, do that. God told you so, God told me so, and there you go. But that time is over. And I brought up the concept of the Messiah complex because I wanted to be cute for a minute and link that to what is truly happening with every single human on earth. And that is indeed, as you have been saying for so many years, the return of Christed consciousness, which I like to call the Messiah simplex. For many reasons, but for the main reason that it is happening to all of you at the same time. That line to God that line to the Creator's self isn't awakening, it has awakened, and it is accessible now. Right now, at this time we're standing here talking, you could still say it is sort of an option, but that is also coming to a close. Because that voice, that song, of the creator self will become so loud in each and every heart on earth every generation every color every gender every belief so loud louder than i'm talking even <laughs> but so loud that it will be impossible to believe in anything else and that, ultimately, is the Messiah simplex. You're all the Messiah. I could do that in a Monty Python voice, but I'm not going to. You're hearing it now anyway. <laughs> but you are all the Messiah. You are all anointed. Not through some fucking oil on the head, like a cooking show but through what was on this board here recently. That link, that connection. And while we're talking on that for a minute, let's go into that for a minute. Because we keep talking to you about these active ingredients, which we are now beginning to call a little closer to home, the permanent states states that exist throughout your lifetimes, that do not change. Hmm? The love you feel right now is the love you feel when you were a cook in Egypt, when you were a, a whore in Babylon. <laughs> I'm not looking at you for any reason. That was just an occasional look. <laughs> when you were a priest in Aramaic times, when you were a mother, a father, a daughter, a son and a child, when you were a murderer, when you were a psychopath, all of these times, the love has been the same. 
That flow is the same flow in every lifetime. And it isn't even making its way through your lifetimes. It is the same state in every lifetime. I'll explain that in a minute. But the pain, the grief, the difficulty in the mind, in the ego, and in the personality, that has been unique to each lifetime. Because it's slightly different each time. All of your suffering <laughs> and all of your mental anguish because of the slightly different makeup in the inverted geometries that make up that particular personality in that lifetime, but that is unimportant. It is finite each time, and therefore it can be made unique. It can be one of a kind, new. Get it now. <laughs> Jump in and enjoy what it means to suffer transphobia. New. <laughs> enjoy what it means to be an animal and get slaughtered. New. Enjoy what it means to suffer this way, to suffer that way. Again, it's why you come here to explore that stuff. But it's not the only reason you come here. You also come to explore what is ahead now. Hmm? But again, those states of suffering, they are finite. They do not cross over from one lifetime to the next, even though, again, in very massive misinterpretations, the concept of karma makes people believe that it does. But that's not how karma works. We'll leave that up to her to explain it one of her conversations with all of you. Otherwise, I get too far from my target here today. But that's not how it works. The other states, the permanent states, da, ba, va, love, joy, freedom, all of those, they are the same in every lifetime. And not flowing through it, as I just said, but permanently the same state. The reason for this is very simple. Hmm? I believe it was the 12 that recently explained to you the difference between the chakra system and the chakra system. Chakra system existing here inside of this holographic training ground. The chakra system existing outside of time and space, usable and observable here through the field of Sankara, through the field of the divine creator self, but not through the field of Savok. Hmm? Those eternal states that you organize inside of your Kakra system, and when doing it in the way that has been described in these past recent sessions, as has also been said, you harmonize the field, you make it permeable, and you allow for these permanent states to become creative in your reality and to manifest those realities around you. But these chakras, if, and they do, if they exist outside of time and space, then that means that they have no size. Then that means that they have no scope, no, no, no limit to them. Huh? There's no space field that defines this far and no further, Kakra. <laughs> and there's no time that says, it's your time to go, Kakra. No, nothing of the sort. I know that over the years, uh, people have asked myself and the other teachers, so how far, where, where is the Kakra field? And then we usually say, oh, about here, <laughs> sort of about there. You know. But that's only because this arm is that long. Obviously, it's not a finite thing. You could argue that the chakras itself, the spheres of the chakras, are the size of this entire universe, of this entire multiverse. And you were also told by the 12 recently that the quadrants, the 
squares, if you will, within these chakras, if you cut them up in four spaces, that these quadrants are holographically representing the entire chakra again. So that also means, to make a long story short, that if you fill up, let's say, this quadrant up here with Da, with love, if you bring that there, or at least if you become aware of it being there, then that awareness is not just somewhere here and, and hanging here in this little quadrant. It fills up the entire goddamn universe. The entire thing. <laughs> you'd think you'd be more impressed. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> the entire thing, beloved, the moment you place that da here or become aware of it being there, you become aware of it being in the entire universe and onward with joy and with freedom and with truth and life and gratitude and grace and well-being and those mysterious little things you are growing inside of your belly chakra. I hope you're watering them. <laughs> so, <clears throat> I drink a moment. So, given that these states are permanent, and given that your chakras technically fill up the entire universe, each and every quadrant of it does too, each and every awareness of these ingredients or permanent states does that too, it fills up the entire universe, you become aware of the entire universe and the entire universe becomes aware of the entire universe being filled up with it. Each time that occurs, you are taking a step towards this creative expression. And each time you're stepping away from physical time and space and deeper into experience, deeper into experiential time, an expression of experience and progression of experience as it has been recently taught. And recently the Padasanka over there and the Pala Asesan were having a conversation and given that the Padasanka is a great fan of uh, computer games and that sort of thing, virtual environments to explore the self within, let's say, hmm? the Palo Alto tried to say, you know, when you activate these points here, love, joy, freedom, it, like, it's in, like in these computer games, you're basically you know, finding a power-up and you're, you're, you're using this power-up and you're placing it in these spaces, if you will, in your inventory, and that gives you access to things that you otherwise couldn't do in the game, or couldn't reach in the game, or couldn't even see in the game. Hmm? It's the same indeed, it's, it's not a bad analogy, but what makes it more powerful is the understanding that once you become aware of these eight first states in your first two chakras at all time, that that is when you begin to fully awaken these four mysterious ones that are unique to yourself. And this can go very quickly. It's been said to you before that this will not manifest as a word in Dalin initially. It will manifest as a feeling much like love, or joy, or freedom, or truth, or gratitude, or life, or grace, or well-being, or any of them. But it will be one that you cannot exactly, or for, <laughs> that you cannot exactly describe. Well, actually, the truth is, first it will be more like one, as you become more aware of the subtle fields that these things are. And then as you become even more aware of it, you'll begin to realize, I, I cannot describe this. You know, this is where Tesla got stuck, trying to solve the world's electricity problems with free energy. 
I cannot describe this. There's no word for this. And the reason there's no word for it is because it literally hasn't been here yet. You are generating it right now. So it is not going to be a color. It's not going to be a, a type of tree. That is what it eventually will become when it begins to be used by yourself and by others, you know, in this Ekariah, in, the, in, in future incarnations of it, as future students go through the same thing, and you'll be standing here doing the goddamn teaching for once. <laughs> it will only then become things that people do with it, that, that beings do with it. And when you get a little more subtle with that feeling that is something else than all these other eight feelings, but somehow similar, you'll begin to feel that, it, oh, okay, hang on, I thought it was just one thing that I was sensing, but it's, it's more than that. It, you'll begin to see that as that brilliant light of manifestation begins to dim a little bit and begins to take shape a little bit in the forms that I cannot explain to you because they are beyond the mind, then you will begin to feel, oh, it's, a, it's not just one thing, it's actually four distinct different states of that one thing that I'm feeling. And then you'll get deeper and deeper with it. Eventually, and only once, you actually finish this particular stage of the Ekuraya and will move to the next step of what has been explained here recently, you will begin to find the expression for it. And that expression, ultimately, you will find some sort of comfort expressing it even in a descriptive language. But that is not something that is going to happen inside of the Ekuraya. That is something that is going to be completed fully when you are preparing to create different levels or different stages of the evolution of this Ekuraya. We'll go deeper into that. But the manifestation of them within you, that is happening right now. And the reason I put so much time on that is that in the completion of that manifestation once you are truly flowing fully through these 12 different states and back up them again which we'll explain much deeper that is when that so-called superpower that so-called inventory stock up that so-called power-up that the Palo Alto was trying to reference as a computer game will fully kick into place when those four distinct states become apparent to you, again, not in name, not in word, but in feeling them, in feeling them in your belly. And again, this will be different for each and every one of you. But once that sets itself up, and this is why I'm calling this message the Messiah Simplex. That is when the so-called anointment takes place. That is when the full flow of the permanent states, the immutable elementals, becomes permanent, unchangeable in your being here. And this is why you have the stories of the sages such as Yeshua, Kuan Yin, Buddha, the many Indian teachers and the many Native American ones and all around the world. Why you have the stories of these people doing what they did, healing the sick, manifesting bread and fish, walking on water, all of the so-called miracles. These are states that come natural with infinometry, with the chakra system fully activated and with these permanent states touched, these subtle fields found. That is when that 
Messiah simplex kicks in for each and every person on earth. That is when it will become impossible to point a weapon or, in general, the mind at anyone in order to attack, in order to diminish, in order to separate, really. And that time is now. So, all of that division that has been generated over these years with religion, I say to you all now, if you are a Buddhist, if you are a Druid, if you are a Wiccan, if you are Jewish, if you are Muslim, if you are Christian, if you are Protestant, and please don't make me name all of them, I'll be here by the end of the day still, but whatever belief system you are in, you have been had. And it is the reason you hate each other. It is the reason you have killed each other. It is the reason you have betrayed each other. All based on what was right and what was wrong. But beloved Christian, beloved Muslim, beloved Jew, beloved witch, beloved mage, beloved druid, it is time to understand that that which you were looking for, that which you allowed because of that search to bind you was a lie. And the peace that is returning to this field of experience is returning because of that truth. Each of you, all these cultures, all these religions, all these countries, all these belief systems, each of you have carried these proudly with all of the burden that came with them. But beyond all of that, you are all human beings. And even that is a game that all of you are playing together. You are all creator. You are all divine. You are all brothers and sisters. And it is time that each, each of you stops listening to the external voices because look where it got you and start listening to that loud song that is now humming within. And to bring that message to your brothers and sisters, to the ones that you deem like you, and to the ones that you deem different. The Messiah simplex simply means that all of you will finally feel the same thing. You will feel the same connection. And you will feel that over the years, nobody has been right and nobody has been wrong. You have seen this in your religions. You have seen this in your politics, in your history, 
and in so many other facets of your human lives here inside of this training ground. You have seen it in science. Boy, <laughs> did they get it wrong, right? <laughs> you have seen it in the observation of your planet. Some say it's flat, some say it's round. We've spoken about this before, right? They've shot cameras up there, international space stations, and they say, well, look, we're, we're just observing here. It's round, it's a sphere, it's finite, it's that big, it's that many kilometers or miles around, and yada, yada, yada. Of course, of course, from the field of Savok, that is what you are going to be translating but there have always been those on this earth that naturally had the senses of Sankara, if you will, and that could see with those eyes and that could observe with those senses. Some of them have become quite well known on your planet in last years and have even become almost single-handedly responsible for saving <laughs> humanity's freedom of speech. I'm talking about the beloved Elon Musk here. This is one of those people that his entire life has been able to see with the senses of Sankara. He could see what others could not. Born for this time. Born for the Aquarian age. Because as time goes on in the next couple of years, there's a lot that is going to come to the surface that you currently either have no clue about or when you do, you think it's a conspiracy theory or you think it is so laughable a theory that it doesn't even deserve the label conspiracy. Well, One of those things is uh, your misinterpretation of uh, planetary physics and cosmic physics and what a planet really is. We have touched upon it. We have said it is not a sphere the way you think. It is really a sort of infinity sphere. But that is not exactly true either. We use the term infinity sphere to refer to the torus field, which in two dimensions is observed as the infinity sign that has been on this board here for the six or seven previous classes. And in third dimension and onward represents the torus field. There have been many that over the years have said the top and the bottom of the earth are sort of open. There's a hollow earth. Again, sort of half true. But if you think about the donut shape type shape of a, of a torus field, if you will, then yes, there is an opening at the top and at the bottom. This is called uh, the, the space of levity at the top and the space of gravity at the bottom. Once the Imzaya archives are restored, you'll find teachings by the Palat Sesan dating all the way back to 2012 or 13 or something like that, where he goes deeply into that. So I don't have to spend too much time on that field of levity and that field of gravity right now. But what I do want to spend a minute on is how continents and therefore land is actually generated. If you think about the Taurus field and you think about the planet that you consider the planet right now, the continents as they are, then these continents are generated ultimately into matter from within the waveform state inside of that torus field and pushed out at the top into the field of levity. That space of those continents that exists there is what you think of as your planet, is what you think of as the three or four main continents, I guess, that make up your world. So in a way, 
you can see how the flat earth society, the flat earth explorers, got it wrong to some extent because it is indeed possible from a certain perspective to observe the top of that torus field as the so-called disk with the ice wall and all of that sort of stuff. But the further you zoom out of it, the further it begins to look like a sphere indeed, but much further than you think of it now. Again, you think that all of these continents that you have now make up your entire planet. And that is a big, big lie. You also think that things like the continent of Lemuria, the continent of Atlantis, the, all of those things that they sank to the bottom of the ocean. And I always say, well, yeah, they sort of sank, but they didn't sank to the bottom of the ocean. If they did, there would be quite a lot you could find at the bottom of the ocean, don't you think? And while you see some remnants and some leftovers of pieces of early cultures, or for instance, Japan is a good example, you can dive there and you can see almost an entire city from hundreds of years ago, if not longer ago, but that is not what happened with uh, the entire continent of Lemuria or the entire continent of Atlantis or all the other ones that, that, that if you look deep enough in your uh, texts, your, your historical uh, information, you can come across. What happens is, as the planet evolves, and now you know how that evolution happens through progression of experience of the consciousness on the planet, that the continents that once carried entire civilizations, that they get pushed outward of, this, of the top center of that torus field and onto the rest of the, the torus itself. That currently is where you'll find the continent of Atlantis. That is where you'll find Tartaria. That is where you'll find Atlantis and all of the other ones that once were. Some of those, like Lemuria, have your best interest at heart. Most of those don't. Or at least they didn't until very recently. Again. You know that the path of service to self was as respected and possible as the path of service to others. And many of these civilizations that preceded yours went the path of service to self. And as they, as their time in this part of the Ekuraya came to an end, and as they got pushed slowly further out, of this particular field at the top of the Taurus field, which you consider planet Earth, you could argue that from the perspective of the arriving continents, which is all taking millions of years, of course, it's not like happening very quickly, like in a theme park, but for the, from the perspective of these arriving continents, that the ancient ones moved into the sea, yes, but they didn't, they moved beyond their ability to be interacting with you directly. And those that were service to others oriented became helpful to the new birth of the next evolution of consciousness called humanity. And others, having gone for the service to self path for the full 95 to 100%, if you will, wanted to dominate and control and use the energy that you generate through the finite types of misery and guilt and pain and suffering. Some have mistakenly called it louche, but I think they were a bit louche in the head when they came up with that name because it has nothing to do with anything we're talking about here. But that energy that you generate is exactly what entities focused on service to self feed on. The reptilians, many humans, that sort of thing. Atlantis is one of those.
cultures, one of those societies that went that service to self path and used the energy of this sacred training ground, which from the perspective of the continents that finish their time at this level and move away and go towards the surface to self flow, if you will, from the perspective of them, this entire space, all the continents that you know and what you think of now as Earth, as you think of it on the globe that you see in your schools, is nothing more but a giant energy farm from the perspective of these entities. That is how it used to be looked at. They felt that because they had higher intelligence than the newly arriving beings, let's say, they could take charge. Don't forget that the service to self path believes that the creator self at the level they discover it at is the thing. The service to self path, when they wake up to the truth, if you will, and go that road, they believe that the state they are in right in that moment, imagine that you would go service to self, that would mean that the state you're in right now would be considered by you the creator state, the creator self. And therefore, everything else around you can be used by this. Hmm? Because ultimately, from their perspective, everything else is going to come home to this. And ultimately become one with that version of them. In other words, they cut off the idea that they can reach higher states of themselves. And therefore, they feel that they have the... Yeah, the, the right, I guess, to do these things that have been happening over the generations with uh, humanity. But they are not the only ones that move beyond this state into the infinity sphere of Earth. What I forgot to tell you is that every time this birth of new continents and therefore new cultures, new civilizations and all of these things happens on the longer cycles because of even on the same continents of course there are multiple civilizations that occur often if they are if they come and go quickly mm. but the ones that remain a long time each time there is a new permutation a new birth of more of these continents they are separated by what is labeled the so-called ice wall. You cannot reach beyond that stage because of the, a type of energy, which I don't want to describe here today, that makes you believe that the Earth as you see it is all there is, and that the rest is space. And that the sphere, therefore, that you are technically experiencing this on, which is more like a torus field, is much smaller than it really is. Now, as we are entering this very new phase for humanity, of course, even that truth is going to come to an end soon. And if it doesn't because of the internal rising of this, for any of the beings that will not have reached that stage just yet, they will be proven this during the first so-called Mars mission of SpaceX. When that spaceship takes off, manned for Mars, which will become the biggest and highest rated reality TV show on your planet because you will be able to watch the whole thing play out live with some delay, of course. When that happens, there is going to come a moment when the cameras of spaceship, and I hope Elon is watching this, <laughs> when the cameras of spaceship will be turned towards Earth because that will be a question that a young child will have, that they want to see Earth. And one of these 
astronauts will turn that camera and will show planet Earth as it truly is, in the way I am describing it to you now. Now, this is planned for 25 or 26 or something like that. So that is really the time that is the pathway towards a final clarity on any of these things. And whoever hasn't woken up by then, they will. When they see that picture I'm talking to you about right now. You can technically already sort of look it up. If you go on your socials, uh, your internet, if you look long enough, you'll, you'll find maps, uh, ancient maps of Earth that show uh, dozens of extra continents. Now that's not an official map in the sense that it's not drawn to size or scale. These are maps that were created thousands of years ago originally when there were of course large spans of time when the so-called energy farm if you will was in control of the more benevolent beings those that were in service to others and were only here to be of assistance they were the ones that shared these maps with humanity in an attempt to explain where they came from because one thing I haven't mentioned yet that is the case is that each time whether you are in an experience in this realm of service to other based beings assisting you or service to self based beings assisting you there are always those that end up having to manage this realm. These days, they are, or used to be, your Rockefellers, your Rothschilds, you know, your kings and your queens, your religious leaders, your business leaders, those sorts of people. But don't think that beyond that ice wall in these other realms and these other civilizations, they carry any respect or any power. They are merely seen as animals, just like all of you are seen like that, that have just enough wherewithal to be able to run the lot of you. <laughs> but in service to other base times, those managers, if you will, were not here to manipulate, they were here to be of service and to assist. And the last time that happened was way after Lemuria. There was a, a giant reawakening of service to others here several hundred uh, years ago, uh, up until, sorry, several thousand years ago, up until uh, very recently, uh, not even a, a hundred or maybe a hundred and fifty years ago or something, at which, which is one of those points where uh, your timeline was rewritten and changed and erased. But then we're talking about the Tartarian Empire. Now they were the type of managers that gave humanity, the, the rising consciousness of humanity, the chance to evolve, very much like in Lemurian times. In those days, there were other beings that, uh, such as Lemoya and others that were fulfilling those tasks. But in this recent period I'm talking about, the Tartarians were the civilization that were selected to guide the humans. And then we are speaking of a time that now is almost mostly erased, but where you could see some of these principles that are now returning actually play out. Ironically, you can still see it in many of the buildings on Earth, ancient buildings and not so ancient. Some of them only built supposedly a couple of hundred years ago or something. And then when you look at those buildings, you can see the original principles of free energy 
as these buildings were designed. And all of society, everything that humanity made, was designed to mimic the human body as an antenna that picks up these permanent states and these elemental states and can transfer them into whatever state of matter, energy, even electricity that is needed. And during Tartarian times, who had their uh, homeland in what you now know of mainly as Russia, that was the way humanity lived. You did not pay for electricity, you did not pay for energy, all of these things just happened normally. But then, about 100 to 150 years ago or something, there was a uh, takeover. The Tartarians were deleted from your experience anyway, they still are out there of course on their own continent, but not in a good way at the moment being punished by this old crew that has been running the show for the last 150 years or so, that have erased all of this knowledge, all of this wisdom that is now returning to you, and in erasing it, created a change in the timelines and in your history that it seems like none of that ever happened, none of that ever existed, Lemuria's experience and Atlantean experience was cut away at the same time because these people are not very good editors. <laughs> and if you edit the wrong thing, then all of a sudden whole pages of the story don't fit anymore. And then if you're even a worse editor, you cut those out too. <laughs> and that is ultimately what has happened. Why you believe that for the last thousands of years, things have been a certain way, why all of a sudden Sumerian culture, Egyptian culture, Armenian culture, Aztec and Mayan cultures popped up all around the same time, all with the same symbology. Oh yeah, sure, sure. Why not? But, again, that too is returning to the normal state. And for those that will not find that within themselves, the evidence of it will be so overwhelming that within maximum two of your linear years, as time stands now, there won't be anyone left who believes any of that nonsense. Because everyone will be communicating with themselves with their creator self. I've told you about organizing these permanent states and allowing the immutable elements to flow through them in certain ways that have been explained here recently. And one thing that may help you want to do so is if you understand that every single version of yourself that exists beyond the Lin point and all the way up to the creator self, all organizes these permanent states in that way. That is what permeability truly means. It means that by organizing your energy field in that way, you can communicate directly with all the other versions of yourselves all the way back up to the Creator Self that also organizes themselves in that way. So you're fine-tuning, essentially. And remember, it may look like a little thing to do, organize a space here, and here, and here, and here, and downward, and discovering these states in your belly. But, as you do it, you're doing it to the entire universe. There is no time and space inside of the chakra system. So whatever is here reaches all the way to everything and everywhere. 
and what is here, and what is here, and what is here, and downward. So, as you begin to understand that everything that we have said over the years was not a joke, it wasn't an illusion, it wasn't just some spiritual feel-good talk, some new age nonsense, sorry guys out there that did all of that, it was surely very inspiring and very fun to watch all of you pretend to be us, but now it's time for the actual work to start. And now it's time for you all out there that thought that you had the truth to truly find it within. And when you do, you'll see that everything we've been telling you is that thing that is in there. I look forward to that day more than I can tell you. Beloved ones, I could keep going on for many an hour and maybe soon again I will. But for now, we will leave it here. This conversation may not have carried an enormous amount of technical information. It may not appear that it has given you many steps forward yet. Upon re-listening, I believe that you are going to discover once more exactly how simple this is. And we will keep chopping away at that diamond until it is perfectly aligned and perfectly visible. Because one of these pieces, for each and every one of you, there's going to be a moment when you get it. When the light switches on and when you understand that it's not so difficult as you think it was. You will understand that the imagination of your mind and your ego and your personality was indeed limited for a reason, not creative for a reason. And mainly you will understand that what is really needed here to come home to the age of Aquarius is to forgive yourselves. To forgive yourselves for everything that you have been, every bad mood that you have had, every negative expression that you have given another. Because at the time, you really didn't know any better. But now you do. Now you do. I wish you a wonderful time ahead. If I'm not mistaken, it is very likely that tomorrow or the day after, but I leave that up to the Pak Kwan Yin Sun and her timing, Solaris is going to be here together with the Seven Sisters. Solaris and the Seven Sisters. Sounds like a 70s band. I wonder what song they'll do. Yeah. <laughs> but they will be here soon to address this Aquarian age deeper. And I will be here with you at that time, dancing with you, singing with you, and just being with you. Because ultimately, that's just the best thing there is. I love you with all my heart. I am Ikara. And I will see you soon. 
Eya ich, Oya ich. As it is, so it shall be. Ohami, Vishka, Imzaya.